Would you agree with that? Do you see the same? And how how do you in with your organization prepare leaders for for or prepared leaders for that big change? Yeah. So in some ways, for sure. But I think in 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 general, the I don't think that fundamentally the skills that the the leaders need kind of during this crisis is is you know somehow fundamentally different than what they needed before. I think what what happens now is that there's much less uh, kind of wiggle room and much less um, uh, you know, possibility to, to make mistakes. I think we're in, in this online environment, you know, we all talk about uh, the body language, for example, or, or just the, the, the non-verbal and, and maybe not video uh, uh, signals that we're missing. And I think you know, in the past, some of the mistakes that, that we could have made uh, as leaders, as, as managers could have been you know, just solved by, by having a you know, one-on-one conversation in the same room. Now it's it's much harder to do that. So I think we we while the skills are the same, uh, I think it's it's much harder now to do uh, all the things right, and uh, and that's probably the biggest uh, the biggest thing for, from from my perspective. Mm-hmm. So having that in mind, did you or maybe are you planning to change some of your leadership development programs? Did you introduce some immediate? training for, for, for your leaders to, to equip them or prepare them for the tough times. Uh, Agnieszka, let me ask you about that. So I think in general, you know, coming from the technology standpoint, what I'm observing and I'm responsible for people technology for discovery. So that's, that's definitely the point we are looking after. So, you know, all these learning systems, they're really shifting these days because, you know, we, we were in a learning management systems. I think that's how we used to call them. We move into learning experiences. Now we are looking into capability buildings. And I think that what Victor was, was, was mentioning, I fully agree that there is a huge shift into what's needed um, in this time where we are now. I think we are saying uh, uh, that this is future skills, but actually it's now like the present skills, right, that we are talking about. I remember there was one of this uh, th- there was one of this um, report with World Economic Forum uh, top uh, ten skills I think for 2025 and I think we are observing already now that we we need them right there is a you know all these active listening skills all the and I and I think on top of soft skills because we are focusing a lot on them we also observe at least I see with some older generations you know that technology use is not on the same level for all of us right when we are talking business of course. We are in a certain businesses where people should be able to, you know, use all the cutting edge new technologies. But look at the schools, look at teachers. You know, I'm observing every day my son is studying, uh, you know, virtually as well. And, uh, you know, there is this this older teacher that Microsoft Teams is super difficult for her to catch up with. Right. So I think the technology as well. And yeah, and the soft skills that everybody was mentioning, empathy as well, on top of everything else. Right. I mean, how do we. How do we allow for mistakes? How do we allow for this? That we leave slack for people to, to you know, take breaks and adjust to what's the new norm as we are calling it these days. Okay, thank you. So you you mentioned the technology aspect and our digital skills, right? And uh, in again in one of our morning sessions, we heard that half of our digital skills disappear in two years' time. And then with aspect of different generations and different levels of digital literacy across our organization, this, is, this, is, this might be pretty tricky. So is there anything that you guys do in terms of helping our leaders and not only uh, to really become digitally savvy and digitally prepared for, for the new challenges of this working environment? Wojciech, any, anything from, from your side? It's a good question. Um, I don't think we have uh, looked into that actively uh, so far. We just assume that most of our leaders know how to operate Teams and all the other uh, equipment. But uh, but it's an interesting uh, thing. Uh, we have uh, we have implemented lean methodologies some time back, and um, our teams were using whiteboards, just physical whiteboards where people draw with their hands and um, and we still didn't figure out how to put them in uh, in digital I mean teams have developed um, all multiple different um, you know ways to to mimic uh, what we did uh, in, in in the real world uh, some use technologies uh, that, that are offhand in teams or just Excel file or, or mural um, but I think uh, you know the physical presence uh, we're, we're still we're still missing that a lot 
Um, I liked what Agnieszka said about uh, teachers uh, in the primary school. So I think uh, the technology um, and, and the whole situation that we're at is actually um, uh, making some deficiencies uh, more, um, more clear and making some talents more important. My, uh, well, the teacher of my seven-year-old, she's doing fantastic. She's in her 60s. And she's keeping, uh, you know, a large group of seven-year-olds uh, engaged for four hours during the day uh, with a technology that was that was not really, uh, you know, used by her uh, any time before. But that that makes her a great leader of uh, of this group. Uh, and technology is uh, is just something that you you have to get used to it. Okay, thank you. Victor, uh, do you observe uh, around you or in your organization that the digital skills gap? And if yes, is there anything that uh, you would recommend to all of us doing to close this gap quickly? Yeah, I mean, we, we're definitely in a kind of privileged position because our this is kind of our day day to day. Like we've been uh, kind of a remote first organization from from day one. So um, you know, right, even before this crisis for the last ten years, we, we've been you know figuring out the way to be able to work remotely and not having to meet in person. Like we, we had offices, we, we met uh, from time to time, but it was never a requirement for us to be able to do the, uh, the job. So, you know, we actually, you know, as an organization, we're quite well prepared for it. Uh, what we, we, we've seen though, and I think this is a, a really, really good sign for, for, you know, kind of for everybody, is that, uh, you know, while we were, you know, kind of a little bit struggling this for 10 years, with the tools that were, you know, not perfect, that that uh, you know allowed us to work uh, remotely, but but you know we always missing some some parts of it. I think now that everybody is in the same uh, uh, in the same uh, situation, all the all, all the you know organizations like like Microsoft, Zoom, uh, you know Slack, everybody who's kind of doing this kind of software, realize that they have to actually uh, help us or have help help you know everybody working. Uh, to to at, at least you know mimic or or try to be able to to do the things that we've been you're used to doing uh, before that. So I think a lot of those tools are catching up super super quickly, and um, I think this is something that's you know if we give it a, a few more months, I think we we will you know we'll see the types of software that that can be used by everybody. Like we really uh, you know if we we we'll, we call it literacy, and I think it's a it's a kind of like a like a really like um, uh, correct way to t to think about it because this should be something as easy as you know reading and and writing that we all kind of learn at school and it becomes this kind of a, like a no brainer that everybody has those skills. So it, you know we obviously have a, a little bit to to catch up, but eventually I think this technology is going to be so easy that we we, we might uh, forget about this as as being an issue going forward. Mm -hmm. So. Um... Apart from the digital skills that clearly we, we all need and maybe looking beyond leaders because we all had to adapt quickly to this new reality, not just leaders, but all our employees in our companies. If you were to give to them one recommendation on which skill or skills they should really focus to be successful uh, in this new uh, setup, uh, what would you recommend to them? Alexandra, maybe let's start with you. Okay, so definitely being precise in communication. So I guess the epoch when we were move, uh, we were using mostly mails, uh, hopefully uh, is right now closed or at least reduced. The case is to be really like quick, but as well very precise, not to overload the teams by the number of the meeting, because right now, of course, everyone is calling, setting up the conference, etc we are lacking this kind of chit chats when we are waiting for a coffee in the kitchen. So be precise and really prepare yourself for the meeting because quite often I believe we all know that uh, some there are some days when we are jumping from one meeting to another, but at, this, at the end, this is our choice, right? We need to be more assertive. We need to really evaluate what kind of meetings are needed from uh, for us or from the business perspective. And it's equally to leaders, but as well to employees. And be conscious that um, you need to have the break. Quite often, it's it's uh, very visible that uh, we are forgetting about the fact that we are at work, right? We are just doing, uh, spending, I don't know, 10, 12 hours in front of the laptop or a monitor. And it was a bit easier 
uh, when we were in the office because someone you know came asked us about something we have some informal chat uh, or even kind of you know this this lunch together is nice nice uh, nice breaking the daily routine right now you can forget about the the surrounding and just focus on the job which is okay from the productivity but not really because again i think uh, later on we will we can touch base on as well the well-being and as well the focus on the mental uh, health and relaxation so be precise and uh, try to treat the time as a really uh, important good Mm -hmm. So precision and, and proper time management. Yes. Agnieszka, anything else that you would recommend as a key to success you... to survive in this new environment? Oh, if, if we talk survive, probably something different, but coming but back to your... Be successful. Yeah. <laughs> be successful. Um, you were asking about one, and I think one for me is, you know, keeping the growth mindset. That's definitely something that helps you catch up with the constant change that is happening around us. I fully agree with all that Alexandra was mentioning. Uh, I would say, you know, stress resilience these days. So, but it comes back, loops back to, um, I think, prioritizing well, using time wisely, because we can like nonstop work, you know, and uh, it's difficult. And I, uh, what, what Wojciech was saying before about uh, lean methodologies and um, all these uh, processes put in place, they also don't, they, they didn't leave us much slack, right? For like not being around together or they, they actually, they were so lean. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm thinking sometimes that uh, when we, when we are in the new, in this new reality, we, we kind of feel that we cannot catch up, you know, with all, all what's going on and constant meetings, as Alexandra was saying, sometimes just set up, you know, half an hour by half an hour without bio break, as I'm saying. So I actually use this nice feature that sets up my meetings automatically to, like five or 10 minutes less, depending on the length. But yeah, I mean, if I would, uh, you know, go down to one growth mindset, that's definitely something that keeps us running for the next years, <laughs> years to come. <laughs> exactly. Wojciech, any recommendation from your side? Uh, there's one value uh, at Amway, which is lead with heart. And um, I would follow this one. Um, there's a couple of elements in it. Um, I think there are individuals in our organizations that are less vocal and the individual environment, uh, we, we may lose them. Uh, there are individuals that need some extra support. Um, like for example, new joiners, they, they may feel less uh, secure when they enter the organization and they, know, they, they don't know where the HR room is. Where they don't know where their kitchen is because there is no kitchen. Uh, they, uh, you know, when you're a, you, yourself, imagine yourself a new joiner, you would like to go in the kitchen and meet, uh, meet new colleagues over there and just have a chat. You don't have this opportunity. Um, so, um, you know, leading with heart in this particular circumstances uh, means uh, bringing people together better, supporting each other, um, you know, not forgetting about those individuals that are less uh, vocal. Um, you know, look at their well-being, not just um, not just objectives. So I hear a lot of you, a lot saying about communication, there's informal chats over coffee. Uh, this is all gone now. So how, how, how did you change, adapt your collaboration, communication style in the remote environment to still keep this, 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 this connectivity between the people and help especially, I think, new employees joining the companies um, to immerse well into the organizational culture and, and, and just um, get well with the new job. Victor, maybe you can start with sharing your sure. experiences here. I, I think it's, it's a great question. And I think I just want to quickly build on what, uh, what Ola and Wojtek said. I think... Uh, now, when we think about communication and we think about everything that's kind of not 100% work professional related, I think this is something that traditionally was not part of the uh, of the kind of work communication channels, right? So we had an email and, and we, you know, everybody was kind of frowning upon folks who send, you know, funny pictures of email. That's not the place for that. And um, we, we kind of, we didn't like that. Uh, and, and, and maybe, you know, we have Slack, we have some other communication channels within the organization. And I think... Now that we, we, we don't have anything else that's kind of you know, the physical um, way of you know, telling somebody a joke or, or just having a laugh by the, by, the, by the coffee machine, I think we need to open up to this. And, and we had this also for, for a while now, 
a lot of the channels that we have on our Slack, um, a lot of communication, communication that happens internally is gonna be not particularly or 100% or work related. So we will have, you know, channels for people who like dogs and channels for people who uh, are coffee aficionados. And we allow this and we can actually encourage it to be part of the of the culture of the company that we, not everything that happens in the work environment has to be like 100% professional work environment project related. So I think this is something that, that it is a tricky uh, kind of decision to make also from the also and from the leadership point of view how do you encourage it but you know a lot of folks would have uh, some hesitation to do that because then you know we, we all have those ideas you know if, if if people start you know spending more time on on this than on work what, what's going to happen but i think this is this is something that's super super important right now because uh, this is also part of the um, uh, of the kind of the, the balance that we need like no no no, no one i think is able to work nine, ten hours straight, uh, with with you know without a single moment of of you know fun or or just uh, or, or a small break. And if even even if they can maybe uh, for a day, it's definitely not sustainable. So I think we, we we need to figure out a way to do this. We need to figure out a way to make it uh, acceptable, to make it part of the uh, of the of the communication within the organization, but also you know keep it uh, keep it professional in some way. So it's um, it's definitely a tricky way to get right. Thank you. Ivana, was it also tricky for you uh, to adopt and, and probably potentially change the communication style? Yes, I would say that uh, it required more efforts, but it's still possible. And just to give you an example, even in my team, we have our virtual remote coffee. This is how we call it. Uh, and uh, we are um, collecting all together all together virtually and we are talking about what we are doing uh, during our free time about uh, uh, books about our hobbies uh, there is only one rule not to talk about uh, uh, job not to talk, not to talk about uh, what's going on uh, at work and I know that it's not, uh, maybe it's not natural. This is not, um, uh, we need to plan this. We need to schedule this uh, in a calendar. So this is new thing, but I, th I think still that it's possible that this is just a switch to the new normal, but it is possible. Okay, thank you. So um, we talked about the crisis and I'm sure it has, uh, pretty big impact on all the people. I personally uh, heard lots of discussions about the mental health of our employees and how, how it impacted uh, their, their well-being and, and mental health uh, uh, working in isolation, um, you know, apart from, from their teams. Some people were really um, strongly um, impacted by that. Do you believe that as companies we should offer some support to our employees and uh, maybe you have done already uh, something like that for, for um, employees? Um, Wojciech, maybe I can start with you. Yeah, I, um, that's probably a small group of our employees, but uh, but definitely uh, we're careful about this group of employees. So um, I'm, um, I'm sensitizing my leaders uh, to watch for, you know, any symptoms or signals uh, coming from our employees that they are just in a better, you know, in, in a worse condition than they uh, that they used to be. Um, you know, I, I hesitate to say that, but I had, I had a casual, uh, you know, uh, discussion with a with a with a friend who is a neurologist, and uh, and she says, look, um, the day drinking thing is uh, is becoming a, an issue. Uh, it's just uh, you know, so it, it's. Uh, it has never been, uh, you know, that popular among um, younger people um, than it is um, like it is today. So, uh, you know, even in, a, in a, even in a, already in the, you know, between doctors, they are talking about, uh, you know, what are the consequences of uh, people staying at home, um, sometimes alone, uh, and that's probably even worse than uh, than than staying in a large group, um, you know, of your family where you have difficulties connecting, and when your child is uh, on your knees when you're doing a call with your uh, with your VP and so on, uh, that's actually pretty funny. I think it's much worse when you're when you're just uh, all alone. But like for our employees, uh, every third of um, Mway Business Center employee uh, comes from abroad, so you know this is this is probably um, even. You know more risk for for those individuals who don't have their families around. Thank you. 
Alexandra, uh, ha have you observed these issues uh, around you? Was that a topic? Very true, very true. Let's remember that Fujitsu overall, we have uh, over 3000 people in Poland and uh, we have a different maturity there. So we have very young people, but as for very mature top class specialist. And I do believe you don't have to have like clinically proven depression to really start to worry about the, the fact that, you know, we are entrapped at home. I can see that our climate as well, it was a bit better when it when we had a spring and a summer. Right now, people tend to, I do feel this tiredness. That's why we decided to ask for a professional lesson. So we have psychologist session, we have um, um, psychologist uh, kind of one-on-one -on -one call. So whoever wants, they had the, the chance to, to do it anonymously. Whoever wants, we are organizing the workshops. So this is part of this CSR uh, program called in Fujitsu Grip. We are as well focusing on the health as such, means that uh, it was a couple of um, sessions dedicated for how to take care about your diet, how to take care about the proper proportion of the physical exercises during the day, because it's quite easy to, if you don't have animals or children, it's quite easy to forget to really, you know, stand up and do something for you. And I do believe, uh, again, I think you've touched base on this when you started this, this meeting, the trust. Because uh, as Wojtek mentioned, someone who is not very vocal, uh, we may not even know that something can happen in this person's house, right? Maybe they don't have the crisis, but the, our employees may not have the crisis, but maybe the partner or child is sick or parents are sick. And we really need to be very sensitive to know it in advance before it will blow up. So we, right previously we were focused mostly about the business, people at office, etc. But right now we need to take a view on the wider context of in which our employees are living. Thank you. I can add something because it's interesting uh, what Alexandra mentioned. We even implemented in our education module for uh, managers um, a training which is called how to recognize that your employee is struggling or not uh, coping well. And also the same as, uh, as um, in Fujitsu, we also had a dedicated session for employees and for managers. And uh, because we need to equip managers also with, uh, and to give them the chance for uh, resilience as uh, Agnieszka mentioned earlier. And also in the education model, we have uh, um, topics as uh, how to deal with a crisis uh, with personal crisis. And I think that something interesting here is that for maybe not for the first time, but maybe it's now more visible that we say that it's okay to say that, uh, that uh, the situation is difficult, that you need help and we are here to help you. Uh, this is probably something what uh, pandemia uh, influenced us, but I think that this is something new what we observe in our organization. Very true. We, we don't have to be always like the shiny and smiling. We are just human beings, yeah. Agnieszka, Victor, anything from your side to add to that? Yeah, I wanted to add, and actually what you were saying, I like this saying that it's okay not to be okay. So <laughs> I, I think that it's good to, to be open about that these days. Um, you know, I'm pretty, pretty new to discovery, so I, I can't say how it was before. As you said, Ivona, you, you observe some new, new uh, type of trainings. I definitely see we, we provide a lot of it. And I think on top of what you were already mentioning, um, there is also a quite interesting series where you can enroll as a parent uh, with a kind of parental coach helping you out, you know, to how to plan things with kids uh, on top of everything else. So I, I found it quite interesting. So we provide it globally. We, we have most of the programs globally, but psychology ones, for example, there is an application you can use and it will reach out to a certain places in Poland and uh, also un anonymously. And I think as well, what I find very I found it quite useful for me when I joined because I joined in I joined four months ago, totally remote. So my my onboarding experience was a good check on what you know what I'm managing now, <laughs> in terms of uh, human, um, all the all the uh, human technology. 
So what I found nice is this app that we, it's called Grokker. I think, I, I, I guess it's like American app that other uh, big companies use as well. But you have all these uh, diet programs there and training programs. It will help you like measure some stuff, remind you about moving, about breathing and, you know, mindfulness classes, many different things that I know that we have many apps and I think we are tired of, of our screens, but this one at least reminds you, you know, if you don't have any other reminder or you don't remember yourself. Thanks for the tips. Actually, all of you are, while talking about your experiences, you are sharing how technology is enabling you. So I'm sure there is lots of practical tips that uh, our audience will benefit from. And Agnieszka, you mentioned onboarding, and I believe this is this is one of the critical aspects these days, right? I, I still remember my first day at work in Olympus, and it's it's a very good, positive experience. And for most of the employees, the first day at work stays as kind of an unforgettable forgettable memory, right, for, for years. So how, how do you guys do that in, 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 in virtual environment to still make sure that this will be, stay as an unforgettable day? And more importantly, how do you help new joiners to feel the culture of the organization, to get connected with the team and, and just feel integrated over time? Um, Victor, maybe I will I will start with you. Sure. Yeah. So I think you know similarly to to, to what we said before, I think uh, you know technology is, is is definitely helping. So um, when we think about this first day, we think both uh, you know about just the education part and and you know the, the kind of a more practical uh, onboarding where we you know we try to give people all the tools, all the information that they they might need. This is pretty simple, and I think it's not not uh, as uh, different to to what we had before, because you know all, all this stuff was was online anyway. But uh, the other part is obviously the, the kind of the experience part, so kind of uh, you know kind of a feeling more on the on the on the culture or, or what they can expect going forward. How can they get some kind of more informal support? Uh, but we also you know we we found a couple of tools that that, that I think are are super helpful with that. Um, we try to organize for everybody kind of a more random interactions that they can, you know, traditionally they may be, uh, you know, experience when coming to the office and, and meeting people by the, you know, proverbial uh, water cooler. So, so we do, uh, we have a bunch of kind of apps or tools that allow us to connect them on, on to one-on-one -on -one conversations with some, with some people from other teams. Um, we also make sure that they are plugged into some of the social uh, channels that I mentioned before as well. Like if, if they're dog lovers, here's the, the dog lover channel on, on Slack. Um, so we try to, you know, mix it in also like on top of the, you know, your kind of tools that you need to, to do the, to do the job well. Uh, here are the tools to make sure that you're kind of a part of the, of the community in a way. So, so we try to, um, you know, kind of mix those two things together yeah through technology basically thank you and agnieszka with your fresh you know memories fresh experiences what was what was critical for you to to feel that you are immersing into the the new company uh, well in, in in this remote uh, uh, type of onboarding well i think it was it's pretty pretty particular right it was monday i remember because i was still on the i took some vacation so we, we managed to take a week off and, and travel somewhere. And then Monday morning, mm -hmm. I just had someone knocking on my door, you know, with all the setup. So I think that's the first thing you normally do. And, and, and what I found quite amazing is that you actually get set up in an hour max with everything, right? So that's, we are, we are very advanced with, uh, I have to say, with technology comparing to the previous places I've seen. Um, so this provisioning, I think, from the technology, because that's, that's my background, that's very, very important. Because, you know, it can get frustrating if you can't connect all your things you, you're using uh, um, for a week, two or, 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 lo or longer. I think second part is definitely that experience, uh, as you were saying, Agnieszka, you know, how you feel, what, how you embed into the culture. That's, that's much more difficult. Uh, what I like here, I think, and what is easier for us, because as we are, you know, entertainment company, we have many branded materials with, you know, our famous shows like, you know, Gold gold rushers or I don't know, Mythbusters or if someone like, like, you know, so lots of brands that you kind of connect with and all the HR material, all the material we are sharing with employees is also branded. So like you're running through IT training, but then you have like, you know, all the TV shows 
in the background. We, for example, had the first uh, like onboarding experience for me was the first all hands with our CEO, uh, where Oprah Winfrey was, you know, a guest. She's part of our uh, channels as well. She has uh, her uh, own network channel is part of Discovery. So that's also pretty interesting, right? But, but it's a very, very special culture, I have to say, because we are TV, we are entertainment, so it's easier. Uh, I think it depends which company you are. And, you know, we also assign body, like a random person. And as Victor was mentioning, we have several uh, workplace. Actually, we're using workplace uh, for like more of the social interaction. So, you know, you, you play bridge, you have like bridge classes with some people that play bridge, you know, you like sports. There are some sports connectors as well. So many different interactions. I like this body thing. For me, that was very, very useful because, you know, not being in office, not seeing anything of uh, Discovery TVN in Poland, just kind of imagining how it looks like. Uh, it really helped me a lot having this weekly catch up. And, and it's, he's not part of my team at all, right? He's mm -hmm. from different uh, organizations, just more of a embedding into a culture of the company. Okay. So, so having a body, a person to go to and ask all the questions, plus see different kind of interest groups or like employee mm -hmm. engagement groups that you can build the, the social network, uh, depending on your hobbies, that helps. Uh, Wojtek, is there anything special or different uh, that you are guys doing uh, in your on new onboarding approach? So at Amway, we say that we are a relationship company, and that's because how our distributors uh, run their business, uh, which kind of uh, you know goes um, into the culture of uh, of the whole Amway. I remember my onboarding, and it was very personal, and I felt very well taken care of and very much welcome, which was an amazing experience compared to what I had uh, you know in in my in, in my previous um, in, you know companies. Uh, it. it um, what we do today, um, we we still have that. Um, in you, you have to be welcome. You have to feel welcome in this place. You have to feel that somebody is personally taking care of you. Like my uh, my first CFO, he uh, he actually took a lot of time to introduce me to to the organization. He actually worked like um, as as my buddy. Um, like he took him took me by my hand and and uh, walked me around the the, the major stakeholders. What I'm doing today is uh, is not the first step of onboarding, but the last step of uh, onboarding. So I'm uh, I'm spending time with new joiners, um, and this meeting lasts for hour and a half or up to two hours, and it's a small, usually a small group of people, not more than ten or up to ten uh, colleagues, and uh, and there is no slideshow. And there is no or very little business um, agenda over there. We just get to know each other uh, using one of those icebreakers that you that you use in, in, in team buildings. And we do this meeting on Friday. And, um, and, and, and the feedback that I get is, uh, is really amazing. I mean, the people just need this casual meeting uh, of, um, you know, of the, of the center hat that uh, that they would normally have in the kitchen. Um, so, yeah. Thank you. We already mentioned trust before, and I, I wonder, uh, especially when, when you consider that uh, our team leaders, managers, some of them are more senior, some of them are, are more junior, just at the beginning of their, uh, of their leadership uh, journey. So how do they balance between control, performance management, employee empowerment, and trust? in this equation. Uh, how, how do you observe that? And what's also your personal recommendation uh, to the people? Maybe Ivona, if we can start with you. Uh, yes, yeah, so first of all, I would say that um, in general, uh, performance um, is very likely affected by biases. So we need to keep in mind that whenever we talk about it, we would like to assess our people's performers, we should be aware of our biases. So this is one thing. The other thing is that um, trust should be uh, built earlier, not just uh, during pandemic time. So if we have a problem uh, with trust in general, so something um, should be changed uh, in the way how the team is managed. But to answer precisely the question, I would say that we should rather focus on expectations about uh, on short-term goals, 
and uh, not to try to control our people, but rather to uh, assess their performance rather in a um, more analytical way and matrix based mm -hmm. to avoid that, that we are not uh, objective. Thank you. The solution. Alexandra, did you did you observe this this temptation for more control when we all switch to, 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 to remote work? Or actually maybe you, you see that uh, there was always lots of trust and, uh, and uh, it was pretty easy without any, any issues on the way. What was your experience? Uh, actually, COVID tested my organization because uh, the, the part of the business which is service desk were never ever on the home office mode in such a scale. So I've moved them almost immediately and uh, we were observing, we were worried a bit. So while discussing with my leadership team, we were worried that, okay, a couple of other line of business will manage for sure because they get used to, but what will gonna happen with the service desk? And we observe it, of course, it requires a lot of effort from the operational management to really make sure that people do, do what, what is needed. But uh, equally, I intentionally wanted to avoid this micromanagement because really this disencouraged people and this, this uh, even forcing inappropriate behaviors because people start to think, okay, if you do not trust me, so why should I care? Yeah. So rationally control, rational control, but as well making sure that if everything is okay, let's celebrate. And what I've changed as well um, this year is that we are celebrating even smaller successes because usually it has to be like a big thing. We need to have like big forum, you know, proceed with all of this award ceremony right now, even small things really making the kind of people happy. And I want to really make it uh, as a big wow about this. And I do believe uh, from the leader's perspective, uh, we need to be, especially now, I fully agree with Ivona that you will not gain more trust when you, when you lost it, when you had the chance to meet with people. But what we need to take care about and what we need to be conscious about is the authentic authenticity and the integrity, especially right now. So we need to, as a management, whatever you call it, we need to be conscious that people looking at us, yes? And if we are declaring something, we need to follow uh, with our actions because only then we can require the same um, from the people. So I guess being authentic and then you are building trust. But uh, yes, this, this, this year actually tested how much uh, trust we have before and, and uh, for, uh, forced and even enforced some of the relations we had. So it, it, was, it was very good. And uh, uh, when we were lacking the trust, it was naturally like, okay, there is a time to go. Uh, pandemic will not solve the issue. So Thank trust you. and authenticity. And that confirms also my personal beliefs that uh, trust should be kind of a fundamental not even a skill, but fundamental attitude uh, in all leadership um, behaviors. So I would like to finish on a positive note because I also heard lots of positive change that uh, that COVID-19 as a crisis brought to us. So it's all not so bad. And I hope the good changes will, will stay with us uh, for the next normal. Uh, so what Personally, a uh, question to each of you. What's the one new thing or a new habit or a new behavior that you would call as a good side effect of COVID-19 crisis for you personally? Ivona, let me start with you. So I would say that something what happened is that I was stopped for a moment and I was able to decide what is my priority and to deal with my double uh, life roles at the same time. And I think that I can say that I'm still successful. And when I think about my dual role, I uh, keep in my mind that I'm a parent, that I'm a mother. And this is a good thing that I'm here uh, together with my children and we are hope with the reality, with the new normal. <laughs> Thank you. Alexandra, what was the new good thing for you? 
uh, I've tested uh, the values which we claim as a company, but as well as the people. And I need to say everything was passed and everything <laughs> is true. So I'm really happy because it's not just declaration, but it is really the, the way how we operate. And Agnieszka? I think I would have uh, similar to Ivona. What my daughter was telling me a month ago or so, she's like, mom, this pandemic is great because you are with <laughs> us at home. <laughs> I had a time when I was traveling with plane, you know, every week or so, different places. Mm -hmm. So it was very tough on kids. I didn't see that. I think it made me realize how they felt. So I think that's good. And the other thing what I value, because I worked remotely for a longer time. It's not my first time. I, I work like this for years. I had to travel a lot. That's true. But I've been without office for years now. So what I like particularly about that now is that everybody understands what home office is. Because before, many people will tell me, oh, you know, great. You know, you, lots of time staying at home. Just, just many positive things, but now everybody realizes what is what it really is, right? Just right. pros and cons as everywhere else. Thank you, Victor. Yeah, it's really super obvious, but but uh, I discovered my love for for remote work. Really, like I'm in Dubai right now, uh, one of the few places that you can you can travel now. But I think with, when it all opens up, more and more people will, will actually stay uh, at least partly in this, and and we've seen a lot of our you know team members going places. You know, in those moments where it was, you know, again possible, now now again a little bit less. But I think when it all kind of comes back to, to I guess, normal, we'll we'll see more people uh, leveraging these opportunities that that come with remote work, where you also don't have to work from home, 100%. So that's kind of a, we'll, we'll we'll get the best of both worlds, hopefully. Thank you. And last not least, Wojciech, what's the new 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 thing for you? I'll, um, yeah, I think it's, um, I like what Agnieszka said, it's, uh, you know, home office is tough, it's, uh, it's not what uh, people used to think before, uh, but the great benefit of that is um, I can be with my family a little bit more than I used to be, so I have three daughters and, uh, you know, the youngest one is not even one year old and I can see her much more often than just in the evening. And then, uh, you know, the other other two girls, they can, uh, you know, come over and hug, hug me when I'm having a call. And, uh, you know, my colleagues uh, are just uh, smiling at them or laughing. So uh, it became a, a part of new norm normal. We're not embarrassed by sitting at home and, uh, you know, kids running around. So it's, uh, it's a, posit a positive thing for me. Guys, thank you very much for sharing your experiences. Congratulations on all the good changes that I hear you went through together with your organizations. And I hope that uh, we can all keep this positive spirit and, uh, and see even more positive changes in our companies and our working environment for the future. Thank you once again. Thanks, thank everybody. you. Bye-bye. Thanks very Bye -bye. much. Thank Bye. you.